hello and welcome again and in this video we'll try to have a quick introduction to the html language uh, HTML, html by itself uh, of course is the foundation of all uh, web technologies uh, it's quite simple uh, language uh, to, to to learn and to understand um, that's why we'll try to uh, make a quick introduction without going into many details uh, and you see that uh, uh, you can figure out the details uh, by yourself with all the links and documents that I, we will mention uh, L, um, but what I want to do here is not just the mm, basic uh, uh, 101 introduction to HTML but trying to uh, start thinking about uh, uh, the design of the language and how to use it uh, to uh, create uh, um, web applications and in particular how to structure the content of our pages so I call that uh, modern HTML uh, because uh, we want to go back historically to the uh, tags and uh, the behaviors of the first version of the, of the language and try to uh, say basically describe what now is called HTML5 uh, and what are the best practices today mm, compared to many other maybe tutorials you can find around that still maybe rely on uh, all the approaches to design web pages and they call that a face-based introduction uh, because you know you are in computer engineering so we assume that there are a lot of people a lot of you already maybe know uh, this these things uh, or are perfectly able to to learn them by themselves uh, and so we'll try to focus on the on the details that could be more interesting to us hmm? okay so uh, the idea is to have a, a, a first uh, quick introduction to the basic features of the language uh, about the structure and syntax which is very uh, easy and uh, especially we'll try to focus on uh, uh, the semantic element that were uh, introduced uh, in HTML5 uh, and that will uh, help us in uh, uh, having a better structuring of the document uh, of the page uh, and will give us a foundation for uh, defining the, the style sheets that we'll see in the just in the next video okay so we'll try to be aligned uh, uh, to the what HTML5 looks like in the current year uh, 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 just a flash of history, uh, last time uh, in, this, in this video series we, di we discussed the um, HTTP protocol that was very resilient over the years, uh, HTML wasn't so lucky, it, it underwent a lot of uh, different uh, uh, new versions uh, and a lot of different uh, uh, say directions uh, for developing. Uh, what you see is that uh, the first version in 1991 was developed uh, in CERN in Geneva by Berners-Lee, which is a very famous man today. And, uh, <coughs> sorry. and uh, later on, uh, there was a first uh, version 2.0 standardized by the IETF, uh, which is the Internet uh, uh, Engineering Task Force that uh, also um, standardizes all the IP level protocols, uh, a lot of network level pro uh, protocols. After then, this was 1995. After then, they founded uh, a new consortium called the W3C Consortium or World Wide Web Consortium uh, that uh, took the um, the goal of uh, managing all the standards uh, and all the development activities uh, of, of around the new these new at that time new web technologies. So since uh, HTML 3.2 or 3.0, I don't I don't list all the intermediate steps here. But uh, uh, the HTML is now, uh, was now uh, a standard by uh, W3C, which was independent from the IETF uh, at that time. Uh, a big uh, major jump in the, uh, let's say, um, expressive power and also design methods of HTML was uh, with version 4. Okay? With versions 2 and 3, HTML was a lot of, uh, had a lot of presentational issues. So it was a language for formatting visually the web pages. Uh, after uh, a while, uh, they, they understood that mixing uh, the content uh, with the presentation, so mixing features related to the semantics of the page uh, with features related to the its visual presentation was bad. And they, would, they were trying you know, to decouple them more and more, and also the style sheets were being invented and, uh, and uh, used more and more, and they, and they became more powerful. This shift began with HTML4, uh, basically, and then uh, something strange happened. So uh, the W3C went into the direction of uh, purity, let's say, 
they were they tried to make the syntax of html more rigid more formal more based on html fe uh, sorry xml features and so they derived the xhtml 1.0 which was very nice for computer engineers for professors for students because it was a very clean method, um, format a very clean uh, standard very clean language uh, so a lot of, of, of the strange quirks uh, strange uh, uh, syntax and so on and uh, a lot of uh, um, errors that you could uh, write uh, in html4 and that could be forgiven by the browser uh, went away so xhtml was a clean language and uh, it was the, so very polished uh, to write the problem is that uh, uh, it was more uh, let's call it academically oriented and it was not very appreciated by web developers and so this happened in 2000, as we see here. Uh, and this version, uh, well, the W3C was already planning and already draft for an XHTML 2.0 version, and 1.1 was, was also published, but uh, developers started to fight this initiative because they wanted uh, as a language that was, uh, uh, on one hand, it was uh, maybe easier to write, uh, so without many um, syntax requirements, uh, that made the language cleaner but uh, also heavier to write and also they wanted a language that uh, uh, was aligned with the kind of uh, environment the kind of web application they were starting that they, they were starting to develop and so they were start they started a, a completely parallel activity that now is called html5 uh, and uh, they decided not to follow the xhtml 1.0 but to start a game from HTML4 and try to improve it and to de maybe deprecate some features that were not uh, interesting anymore and they started to uh, include the new features that were more aligned with the content of the pages of, of course they were also taking into account all the uh, separation from visual and, um, the, and semantics but actually in html5 they were trying to put more semantics into the language while xhtml was a more neutral uh, language it was it was possible to design anything while in xml5 gained a new uh, tags uh, specifically for for the structure of, of web pages that we are designing today and we'll see the details in a moment so what happened is that there was a fight actually and uh, the fight was settled in uh, 2014 more or less when the uh, html file was standardized by this what wg which is a web hyperprotect application technology working group uh, which is this group of persons that uh, uh, and companies that went to develop uh, this standard and they uh, finally set an agreement with w3c and right now if you go to the wc website web page they, they are saying that they are not developing anymore they are not publishing anymore the html5 standard but this will be uh, published on the what um, uh, working group web page hmm. so right now they are aligned but uh, the, the 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 main responsibility of this new what with this strange logo so this question mark is actually the logo of this working group and this is a live standard like they call it a live standard because there there is no fixed version there will not be 5.1 5.2 5.3 but will everything html5 that will evolve over time and its support by the browsers also will evolve over time we have i put two links here uh, one is of the official specification live specification slash multi-page because otherwise it would be on a very long single web page but there is also a slash dev version, a version that is more intended for web developers. Uh, so it's more interesting for us because it has more examples uh, concerning uh, the creation of web pages and it has less details concerning the implementation of the language inside the browser. So this uh, second link is the preferred one for browsing the um, XHTML5 uh, um, uh, declaration. And we see it's quite easy to read actually. It's not very formal, it's very practical so we are uh, following a shift from uh, a language uh, uh, for creating and designing web pages to a language that is more oriented to web applications and takes into account explicitly the kind of user interaction 
that we are building into today web pages and so we see that a lot of tags here uh, are new for example the audio and video part uh, are all new for user interaction and a lot of tags for especially for uh, visual design are not uh, allowed anymore in html5 and as i said html5 is not one monolithic version but is a web of standards actually uh, there's a mixture of different technologies coming into play and uh, the the sum of all of that uh, could be uh, called uh, the current status of html5 so we have the uh, let's say the w3c documents uh, that still are, are still valid and, and some parts of the language uh, are still uh, say defined by w3c we have the what vg uh, documents the, the, the one is the, in the green um, blo um, cir circle and uh, and and we also have additional uh, apis ad additional uh, standards uh, some by w3c some by what vg some by other working groups and so on and this uh, yellow dashed line more or less tries to uh, summarize what is current okay what currently is being used of course this is not a fixed uh, boundary something that is evolving over time uh, we see that the s6 uh, is then now uh, this this uh, these are quite it's a bit old this picture i didn't i couldn't find a newer version uh, but some of this uh, will be probably included into the common use uh, today mm? and so on so it's an expanding circuit that are pulling together different standards coming from different uh, um, standardization institutions w3c what vg or others mm? uh, and in this dynamic uh, uh, say landscape uh, uh, probably one resource that we should keep uh, uh, into our uh, tool set is this website called caniuse.com so basically can i use uh, is <laughs> answering to the question can i use this language feature can i use this tag can i use the attribute can i use the uh, style sheets can i use this api and so on and this website try to summarize uh, uh, what uh, the different browsers uh, so internet explorer edge firefox chrome safari and so on um, whether they are supporting or not in green uh, in red or in partially yellow uh, what is the level of support of a given feature for example this is the page for drag and drop uh, from different browsers and different browser versions okay and uh, there are quite many ways of presenting the information but at least you can if you are uh, wondering whether you want to use uh, an advanced feature uh, that was developed uh, maybe more recently by the working groups uh, you can check here whether uh, uh, it can be uh, maybe uh, how many users uh, will have access to this feature based on the on the browser support and based on the statistics of users of your browsers so you can decide whether 78 percent of the browsers of the users uh, uh, would suffer or not from uh, uh, using a, an advanced feature uh, and of course you can also uh, see uh, uh, which are the ones that are lagging behind hmm? So basically, uh, what is the structure of an HTML document is very, very simple. It's just a text file in a Unicode. Uh, the first line is mandatory. It does, it's just uh, simply doc type uh, with a exclamation mark uh, uh, HTML. Mm -hmm. So the, every uh, HTML file will HTML5 style, uh, file uh, will start with this declaration which is very, uh, if you compare them with the, for, uh, the HTML4 declaration, there were many, very complex, there were three of them with a lot of attributes, here it's uh, uh, much simpler. And uh, uh, basically after the initial tag, which is a doc document type declaration, uh, it's all of a set of nested tags. It's uh, the structure of this text file is basically a, a nested tree of elements. Each element is identified by a tag, with the markup with this angular parenthesis markup and uh, the nesting should be precise restricting with some exception because some tags can may be auto closed automatically closed but uh, apart from a syntax uh, say shortcuts uh, uh, the nesting should be perfect should be complete and um, and of course there are rules about uh, which elements can be nested in which other elements and there are rules about what's the meaning of a given element in our page. 
so the, the basically the structure of the language is very simple we have uh, elements each element has a start and end tag which identified by a slash each element can contain some attributes like here so the a element which is an anchor for creating a link has an href attribute it's called the hypertext reference that points to the linked page okay so it's very simple here but from the language point of view we have an element that has one or more attributes here and an element may have a content and the content may be just text or a content of an element like p in this case a fragment of text then a nested element a then a third fragment of text so the p element has three different sub elements text a and text again <coughs> okay so this is basically uh, the, the language structure and the top level structure of the of the document is also fixed because the the first the root tag must be an HTML element and it has two children exactly two children one is called the head and the other is the body the head is basically a container for metadata links uh, loading style sheets and so on and the body is the actual content of the page uh, inside the body so inside the head you can have some kind of metadata some kind of text inside the body you can have any any possible text and that here uh, is the place where you are actually designing your web page uh, what the browser does uh, immediately as soon as he uh, decided it uh, loaded a web page okay the first step uh, from a browser point of view is immediately parsing the HTML getting rid of the tags and the syntax and the spaces and so on and creating a, a parse tree okay so basically we will see that okay this is the doc type then we have the html tag that element that will contain head and body also some spare text you see that there's a, a, a new line and a space that will come from this new line here and this space there of course we you're, you're practically we don't care about spaces but the browser will still <laughs> uh, need to consider them uh, and then the head contains a title and title contains a text while the body contains an h1 with a text a p with three sub notes text a and text and the, the simple text is a, a sub node of a a children of, or a child of a and so on hmm? So this is the structure that we should have in mind when we read this text. All the design, all the programming, all the uh, activities on, on HTML will always uh, are easier to understand if we think about uh, uh, the content being structured in the tree. Uh, of course, this tree will also be the basis for the DOM when we study that in a couple of lectures, uh, which uh, that that yeah, every um, part of this tree will correspond to a JavaScript object that we, we can manipulate. Okay, um, so these HTML elements, uh, we call them elements uh, in general, then we see how, how many of them there are and what is their purpose. Uh, uh, basically in HTML5, so in 2020, uh, are used to define the meaning of a portion of a document. So if you read the HTML documentation, there is not even a single word telling you that uh, uh, this is going to uh, be black or this is going to be red or this is going to render with a larger or a smaller font. There is no notion of presentation in the HTML5 uh, specification. And if you, uh, if you check uh, the details, uh, all the presentational elements attributes and so on have been removed and deprecated from html5 uh, specification so basically what the working group is telling you is use html just for content uh, just for the structure of your document uh, and the meaning of the different parts of different sections of this document of course uh, uh, you are writing a markup uh, in a say, semantic way so by expressing expressing what you want uh, and these semantics will be rendered, rendered visually in some way hmm? uh, according to the style sheet. So basically this is where the style sheet, the CSS will come into play. Taking an HTML which by itself doesn't have a, um, a visual 
uh, property doesn't have any predefined visual appearance and turning that semantic uh, tagging into something that can be understood visually so if i'm saying that an element uh, represents a title with the uh, the heading which i hate h1 tag well at the, the html I'm, at the html level i'm only saying this is a heading while the style sheets will decide that a heading should be uh, on a line by itself should be a, with a larger and bold font uh, and should maybe have a background or a color different from the rest of the text this is not uh, the purpose of html it is the purpose of uh, style sheets uh, from the html point of view there is one important uh, difference uh, that impacts uh, strongly the presentation can also be modified but uh, it's better to, to understand them um, from since the beginning every element uh, uh, as an attribute, uh, hmm? so we saw uh, attributes here, like the href attributes. Uh, some of them are visible, are designed by the, 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 the programmer, and some of them are available, but they are not uh, uh, immediately uh, visible, or they are not represented in the language. And one of these attributes, in particular, is, is the display one. Uh, it may have different values, we'll, we'll discuss them when, when we'll discuss the style sheets. Um, but basically, <coughs> the, it determines uh, how a given sequence of elements uh, will be positioned relative to each other. Hmm? Uh, there are uh, two ways of positioning elements. Uh, one is uh, uh, the block level display. And the block level display is what you see when you have a sequence of paragraphs. We have one paragraph. Uh, and the next one is below this one if you have a title is again below if you have a picture is below again so on so all these uh, elements uh, are um, laid out uh, from top to bottom and they usually take all the whole white of the page or of the available space so they go totally from one they uh, occupy 100 percent of the horizontal space and they take some vertical space and one block after the other if you have more elements which are which are of the block type they will be uh, rendered uh, or one below the other uh, block types can be nested one inside the other so of course the rule will apply also recursively and block types may contain also inline elements so inline elements are the elements that you are expecting to see inside a single paragraph so if you have something to highlight a word, to change its color, change its font, it's, it's a variation that uh, happens only inside a given line. And uh, uh, inline elements are um, occupy just the space that they, they need, just the necessary space, and they are uh, laid out left to right. So uh, we, decide, we described a paragraph, which is one block level, element inside this paragraph we may have different inline elements maybe one word a title uh, an icon a picture and so on and all these elements will be uh, paginated from uh, line to line and so on so if you if we want to make a parallel with uh, say word with the microsoft word processing system uh, the display block uh, more or less sets the paragraph properties and the inline pro block uh, says that character properties so you saw that in, a, in the formatting a word you have a, a completely different set of commands for formatting single characters um, and another set of commands for formatting paragraphs lines spaces and so on all these visual attributes will come into play only later but the html elements already have some predefined marking and basically the, the basic rule that we must follow at this stage is the, that uh, block elements can contain other block elements or inline elements. On the other hand, inline elements can only contain nested, uh, nested in them other inline elements. It's not possible to have a block element inside an inline element. This is the only rule that is important to follow at the HTML level. Of course, uh, all the visual consequences will come and will be discussed in the style sheets. And uh, there are many uh, HTML elements, of course, and this is a picture uh, directly taken from the specification that tries to group them into broad categories. Okay, um, we see that uh, there are some 
uh, elements for uh, giving titles to the page and giving structure to the page uh, heading contents uh, define uh, uh, the, the title so we can have a, a, a major title a second level title and so on in the page so this is the, the easy part but the page uh, can be also divided into different sections um, which have different roles different purposes um, a web page is not a page of a book a page of a book uh, only you know as the contents you may, you, you may have some title some second or third level title you may have a picture and so on uh, but actually it's a sequential and what it's what uh, uh, html4 was thinking or X, xtml was thinking a linear structure uh, a web page uh, is a container for an application so you will have a menu you will have a sidebar you will have a footer and so on each of these portions of the page is called a section so there are comments for explicitly defining sections uh, so the, the the title section the footer section the main section and so on and inside these sections probably you will have titles to define to describe what is the title that represents the content of this section so they are actually on two different levels the sectioning decides the containers the blocks that compose a page and the heading gives a title to each of them or to each part of them and then we have the uh, two other strange definitions called the phrasing content and the flow content uh, you see flow uh, comprises practically everything and is usually uh, there are block level elements that are trying to put together and to combine other content uh, while the phrasing context uh, is actually the real text of the document, the real content of the document, uh, and it's uh, here, the phrasing, is uh, uh, mostly composed of inline level elements uh, that uh, uh, define uh, the intra level, intra paragraph level of the content. So, something that uh, um, many phrasing content, many phrasing elements are put together to create a single paragraph. These are just broad definitions. Uh, let's see some examples. So the the general structure of the page uh, is made with the these sectioning uh, elements. So maybe a page may have an article, may have a navigation, or may have a general section. And inside uh, each of these sections that you can define, and they they have a broad semantics, uh, uh, you can define your uh, the titles. So uh, title level one, title level two, the heading of each section. They, all of these are block level elements so they paginate top to bottom they lay out top to bottom and here we have an example of uh, uh, taking for the specification of uh, how we are uh, supposed to be using uh, uh, how we are recommended to be using uh, uh, these different uh, uh, elements mm? uh, from the visual point of view we'll see that they are all equivalent so they they are, all of them do basically nothing but they give a meaning uh, to which the size sheet can attach and can uh, customize uh, uh, the appearance of a page mm -hmm. so for example the navigation section will be inside nav uh, uh, the main content of the page probably will be inside an article tag where we have the content described uh, and the uh, sidebars uh, uh, should be probably into an aside element and so on mm -hmm. and then we have the, all the the header and the footer uh, will include the, the, the top part of the page and the bottom part of the page which are excluded from the from the main content uh, in the center mm -hmm. so these are not general mm, tag they're general elements because you could imagine uh, a strange layout uh, which doesn't follow this top and header and footer and aside and main content uh, uh, rule but this co is close to what uh, actual real web pages look like uh, all these elements was, were not in uh, HTML4, they were not in XHTML1, uh, but the HTML5 working group thought that it was important to give to um, represent explicitly what is the purpose of a given part of the page. Mm -hmm. And so they defined this set of tags. They are not really used everywhere in every developer. They are not uh, all not all the developers are fully aware of this, uh, but we'll try we'll try to be. Uh, and as you see, 
uh, the, um, this is an example of a web page that follows more or less uh, you can see that the header we have the a heading which is the title we have a footer there we have an aside there with its own title instead no, that, key, that can be composed by using this text uh, of course uh, the fact that uh, the uh, related aside block is uh, in parallel uh, to the uh, main uh, article is something that we will learn to, to, to describe with the style sheets. Right now uh, it has no visual meaning, but, but it helps us to understand what we want to achieve. Okay, uh, the grouping content, hmm, we see it on this uh, part here, is uh, a part of the flow content that is used to group and pull together other elements. Uh, uh, are just paragraphs, uh, uh, preformatted text, uh, lists, uh, uh, which are unordered lists uh, or ordered lists. So uh, basically, we, we will call them bullet lists and number lists. So the unordered lists uh, are made with bullets because the order is not important, and the order list is, will be made with numbers or letters because uh, we want to make, uh, be explicit about the order of the elements. The elements uh, of each list will be li. Um, we won't go into details here, so it's um, if you just have to click here and see all the examples, it's uh, there. It's very, it's really very easy. So, um, uh, for example, we have a, a we will try to just to to motivate the, the reason why the elements are defined in this way. For example, menu and ul are the same. Well, they have the same result. They create an unordered list in both cases, but these. UL should be used uh, when you have a, an, an actual list of items to show, while the menu uh, element should be used when your list composes possible comments. So it's the list of the possible actions that you can do. They are both uh, lists, they are both unordered lists, but they are, uh, if you are using a creating a list to define the possible comments or the possible sections to navigate, then you'd better use a menu uh, element. So it's clearer. Uh, to, con to convey the, uh, the, the semantics uh, that you want to create. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for example, the main elements uh, should represent the, the part of the, or the page that contains the main contents. So uh, without the header, uh, without the footer of the page. And if all these containers are not enough for our purposes, uh, we can use div, which is a generic container. So the div element is a container, a block level container that doesn't have any meaning at all. So it's just a, a division. We will uh, uh, need to add uh, um, a meaning uh, semantics to these divisions uh, using classes uh, and titles and so on. Um, but uh, uh, the, the, the suggestion is uh, if you can use uh, one of the other dividers which have a predefined uh, meaning, it's better than using a division that uh, uh, it's not uh, self-documenting in some way but it can be used of course we will have a lot of them in, uh, in our page especially for creating the final content of the page uh, the phrasing content which uh, is uh, how we construct the real content of it, or, or each paragraph uh, is actually very rich we have uh, many different texts uh, um, it's uh, they are it's in line content so it's formatted left to right uh, uh, it's just to try to highlight the most uh, used, uh, frequently used uh, uh, elements. Uh, um, basically, we have the A for creating links, uh, bold and italics uh, that can also be uh, described as strong and emphasis, uh, and EMG for containing images. So basically, these are the basic of, of, of formatting: uh, bolds, uh, under um, italics, uh, links, uh, and images compose uh, actually a paragraph. We have many other formatting tags, and uh, in particular, we have the spam tag, uh, which is the corresponding uh, to to the div element uh, in the in the inline word. So while div is a generic block container, spam is a generic inline container. If you only want to mark up a portion of a paragraph, one word, two words, and so on, and give a meaning to that, and none of this current tag text is already good for giving the meaning that you want then you can use a span just that that delimits and marks that portion of the page to which you want to assign a meaning or to which you want to later apply a formatting and so on 
Um, there are also some interactive uh, content and elements that are used to create a multimedia presentation, audio and video. They are used to create forms, uh, to enter data, to select data, buttons, uh, inputs, uh, text areas, and so on. Uh, we will come back uh, to most of these elements when we discuss the forms, uh, because forms are basically are uh, characterized by, by, by an interactive uh, behavior, so we, we will need uh, uh, say to include also the JavaScript in the picture because before uh, discussing the, the behavior of the, of these elements. Of course, the easiest interaction possible, the easiest possible interaction is just having a link on a page. All the others belong to forms or multimedia content. Uh, there's also a rich in HTML. There's a rich language for describing tables. And tables in HTML5 are very uh, powerful, and uh, and we'll see that the style sheets will uh, allow us to to format the tables in many, say, uh, rich and complex ways. Uh, we I want I don't want to be boring uh, and right now in describing uh, the structure of the table. I will just mention that there's a big table element that is the container for everything. And then we should mark up some rows, for example, this one, which part of the heading of the table, and some rows here, for example, that are parts uh, of the body of the, of the table. And in some cases, you may also have a total row, and there will be uh, the footer of the row. So we are marking up the, some rows or groups of rows with, uh, by saying, okay, these are the headings, these are the footers, and, these are the, and this is the main content uh, of our page. Of our table, sorry. Um, again, these markers have no visual effect immediately, but they can be used to, to apply style sheets later, later, or maybe to help also. Maybe in uh, just imagine if in JavaScript we need to regenerate the content of the table. Ninety-nine percent of the times we only need to regenerate the body because the head and the foot are will not change in, in a way, and so it's easier for us to go and pick. Uh, the part of the of the page uh, which is important for the uh, current action and inside these groups uh, because the head and the body and the foot are just groups of rows we have individual rows marked by tr and, uh, and a tr element that will contain many cells and each cell uh, will maybe uh, just a data cell or a heading cell for example these are heading cells uh, these are heading cells uh, and uh, all the others here in the, in the middle are just data cells. Um, we may have a caption that can be formatted on top or on bottom of the page. Uh, we may apply attributes to columns, uh, which is uh, we have with a color group uh, attribute and so on. But of course, for the uh, and um, for the advanced formatting uh, like column groups or spanning uh, rows and columns, for example, you see that this cell is spanning four rows and this is also spanning four rows and so on but this terrestrial appearance is also spanning two columns because actually we have column one here column two here and these two columns are needed because we have this division here and so one two and three cells here the blank one the terrestrial and the dwarf uh, need to span two rows hmm? so we can create complex table by using the row span and call span so that a given cell will extend uh, over and including the next cells to its right or to uh, or below it. Um, so these are the main groups of uh, of elements, uh, and uh, each element uh, has their own specific set of attributes. So some attributes, for example, in the in the links, we see that we, uh, we can, to create a link we need an href attribute that uh, will tell me where the link is leading. But there are three uh, attributes uh, that are, that are uh, can be defined on every element. All the elements may have uh, these three attributes that are that will be very important in the visual design and also in the, in the programming in the, the in the JavaScript interaction with the DOM of these elements. These attributes are ID, class, and style. So uh, ID is a unique identifier in a usually just it's a string form. Uh, that represents uh, uh, that mm, a, an, any element, an element in the HTML uh, document. So if you want to say, okay, this paragraph is the paragraph where I have the conclusion, and there is only one of them in the page, I can call this paragraph of P 
id equal to conclusion for example and so it will be easy to identify that particular paragraph in a very very complex page it's a sort of a, a giving a name to a specific element element in the page hmm? uh, and this name will make it easy to reference that specific element from the JavaScript and will also make it very, very easy to find that specific element in your JavaScript code hmm? to read it or to modify it. If we want to have, do some operations that are not on a single uh, element uh, that can have a unique identifier, we can use the class attributes uh, attribute to create groups uh, of, identi of elements. So a class is an attribute that may uh define one or more identifiers more, one or more names class names uh, that apply to a given element and it's possible that an element contains many is tagged with more than one class so we may have a one class aa that is applied to 27 different elements or oh, and uh, class bb which is called uh, which applied to other 50 elements and in particular, this element is tagged both with class A and B. Mm -hmm. So we are totally free. And these classes, uh, again, will be used uh, by style sheets uh, to apply a given formatting to a group of elements that share the same class type, the same class name, or to uh, work uh, in JavaScript uh, with a group of elements altogether. All the elements with a given class uh, will be maybe modified, found, uh, deleted, or whatever in your, uh, in your code. Um, and so this is a more versatile it's a why unix is a one-to-one -one mapping be between elements and names classes are a many-to-many -many mapping so they have uh, uh, one class uh, will can be uh, tagged or can be declared for many elements uh, and one element can contain many classes there is no constraint what whatsoever over the name of these classes uh, usually you try to use uh, normal identifiers so letters and numbers uh, but uh, uh, you can just make your own uh, make them your uh, make your make up your own names uh, there are no predefined names when we will use uh, maybe some frameworks uh, css frameworks or javascript frameworks maybe those frameworks will predefine some class names uh, for us uh, that will have a special meaning but the html language doesn't uh, attribute any special meaning of them to them finally the, the style attribute that can be applied to all uh, elements uh, but it's better uh, not to overuse it uh, it's uh, used to apply a specific css command to one specific element as we will see css is, uh, it, uh, will uh, work by matching and applying attributes so uh, usually uh, we will have a rule to match one element or more than one element but if you want to override the general style sheets uh, of your page you can override it by giving a special css rule to a given specific element to a specific element in your in your page uh, i would i would try not to use it very much except maybe for um, arranging some some little detail and uh, in some specific element uh, because uh, it's very um, hard to maintain uh, a web page where every element has their own style declared inside the elements we are sort of going back uh, to the uh, to the presentational co uh, attributes in html we are trying to remove all the presentational attributes uh, and put them into um, into the style sheets uh, what it, it can be done is dynamically in javascript that we will modify the uh, the style of an element by bonifying its property without declaring a style uh, attribute on the element we will do that directly working on the dom uh, object hmm? but it's there so that you remember that these three elements are the links uh, between the html and the css and the javascript word they are linking the three words together thanks to these three ways of tagging the elements um, and uh, of course uh, already mentioned uh, uh, that these two important elements uh, that are div and span which are the wildcards I, I call them so they are elements that are good for every purpose and they are good for for delimiting uh, uh, for containing a group of elements at the block level or a group of elements at the end line level so at the single line level and they are both share the fact that they are not predefined semantics and by themselves they don't do anything visible so they are just there for delimiting like uh, 
in a programming language you will put a, a, a couple of parentheses to make it clearer to delimit a part of an expression and uh, but they are used very much uh, to uh, act uh, as markers for style sheets to be applied as markers for javascript to be executed on a given element or for uh, event handlers to be attached to a given group of elements and so on mm -hmm. so they are uh, the invisible structure of your page uh, and as I mentioned, we could create uh, a web page uh, layout uh, using, for example, all divs uh, and marking this uh, uh, division with an ID of header. Of course, a page only has one header, and so an ID is a, a good attribute because this should be unique. There's a navigation part which is also unique, so we give an ID to this division. And of course, inside, nested inside this division and nested inside this other division, We'll have uh, all the elements, all the icons, the titles, uh, the buttons, and the menu, and so on, that will compose uh, this part of the page. And then we may have uh, an article, and this article is composed of many sections, and so on. We may have a sidebar, and so on. So we create, we delimit the portion of the page by different divisions. Or, better, if we can, we should use the semantic tags in HTML5, which more or less have the same purpose. Okay, um, we we can uh, we can use them, and it's per, it's clear, of course, because we are using a tag which is predefined in HTML. But uh, uh, the the effect will be equivalent as we are using many say uh, opaque elements. Uh, the div which doesn't have any predefined meaning and attach a class to that. Okay. So, uh, uh, practically, it's the same, uh, HTML5 authors will try to suggest you working with the second one, uh, but uh, they are um, basically um, equivalent, okay? Um, we, I, we chose to use class instead of ID in the article part because probably one page may have many articles or one article may have many sections, so uh, it cannot be a unique attribute, while the sidebar if it's present it will be only unique so we can use an id so these are already choosing a class over id will already tell us something about uh, the cardinality of the element in the web page if you want um, by the way uh, by default rendering a section or rendering a div is the same and by default this rendering does nothing okay again they are both invisible elements uh, it's the only css rules that will apply that it will transform section and article into this layout and what we transform these divs into this layout mm -hmm. uh, it's basically right now we are structuring the page later on we will lay it out and uh, again uh, we'll see an another example of how we're using the semantic tags uh, to create a common structure of the pages uh, aside in this case aside is on the left in the other example the aside was on the right from the HTML, we don't see it. We really don't know where, where the aside will, will be placed because only the style sheets will declare whether the aside will float right or float left uh, when we declare it. So at the moment, uh, we are just saying that this part of the content that we, are, we will be writing here will be uh, used and is inside to the main content. Uh, for As a guidance uh, for uh, choosing which elements uh, to use in structure on your page uh, you can follow this example flowchart uh, which uh, basically asks uh, qu some questions and so you can decide whether uh, what you are trying to achieve is better expressed by a nav or an article or a side or a section or in, uh, you see that if you answer no to everything you will go to a div and say okay so you are trying to do something else uh, so please do it. Uh, there's nothing predefined in uh, HTML5 uh, that will help you with that. Uh, and so use freely a div, which is not forbidden, of course. Mm. Uh, this, for example, is one specific uh, uh, feature of HTML5 because in HTML4, we wouldn't have any, any of this was available. Only the div was uh, defined because from the language, po language point of view, they are all equivalent. One of them was enough. But from the designer point of view, they have a, a different purpose. Okay, 
Um, so to um, basically conclude this presentation, I found a very interesting uh, uh, picture. And of course, at this level here is, uh, is barely readable, uh, but it gives you, let's say, a uh, modern suggestion of, about what beautiful HTML looks like. So there's a lot of suggestion of uh, how you should write uh, an HTML page, uh, not just from the syntax or from the rules point of view, but also from the best practices. Okay, so how to use uh, text, how to use attributes, uh, remem remember to use semantic classes, uh, remember to tag classes, use classes and IDs to mark every important pa part of your page, uh, where, where and how to include style sheets, uh, where and how to include the JavaScript, uh, and so on. So uh, I, I would uh, suggest you to go to this link, which is uh, reported here to have uh, try to read the this example page this is a person that tried to, to navigate uh, uh, many websites and try, try to pull pull up the best practices that he found and and try to uh, create this infographic uh, to represent uh, them all and so we try maybe to uh, learn uh, what is the best way of structuring the pages you see that it's a it's a very clean structure if you open a real web page it will not be so clean because web designers are very bad persons and they try to put everything together and put javascript and put tables and so on uh, whenever they are not needed so we'll try to to learn a more clean design than the current mess that we have in many websites and we'll try to follow these rules uh, so by uh, reading or looking at the links that we saw about uh, what WG uh, website and to follow some, some, some instructions here, I think you will be very quickly able to create your own web page. We'll have a lab for that uh, in, the, in this week. And, uh, and for now, HTML will be the basis for, uh, for the visual layout for the style sheets that will come in the, in the next videos. And, uh, um, just for for seeing at the looking at the future uh, right now in the first part of the course we will be designing some HTML pages by hand for creating a very simple application um, we, sh we must keep in mind that we want to structure the page very clearly because later on when we go to the react framework every portion of the page will be a different uh, component in uh, in JavaScript in, in react so if we are mixing the HTML all together, it will be very difficult also mentally to switch from I put the HTML together to I created some components. Each of them will have their own space on the page, their own behavior, their own content and so on. So let, let's try to make the effort of, of designing clean pages. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are not uh, and we will not be very quickly, very, um, let's say, quick or capable with CSS or some kind of layout will be difficult to achieve. We don't care at the moment. Okay. Uh, as we grow and as we uh, discover more powerful framework, uh, also the, the visual appearance will be better. The important for us, for the programming part, will be also always to have a very clear structure. If you have a clear structure and you are marking all your classes or your IDs or your semantic elements, uh, then it will be very easy for, uh, say, a designer or for, uh, 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 say, um, a style framework to uh, reorganize the visual as, as aspect of the page very easily if the page organization is very clear. So let's be abundant with divs uh, and, and spans uh, to mark all the details of the page. Okay, this concludes with this quick introduction uh, to HTML and in the next uh, video we'll see uh, something about the style sheet that we can apply so that we can have something to look at really. Thank you.